Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about fragmenting type in After Effects. Uh, so here we are in After Effects. I'm going to reset my workspace to default. So one handy way to import stuff in After Effects is if you just double click in this project window. I'm going to find um, a square composition uh, I have set up from Illustrator. I'm going to import it merge layers footage. Then I'm going to drag it to this little icon down here and you see it highlights blue and what that'll do is that'll create a composition at the same size and aspect ratio as our original file. I'm actually, I'm also going to go back to this Illustrator file for a sec, uh, which is over here, and just make a white background. So there's no alpha. There we go. Okay. So now that I have this in here, I have to create a black and white image that I'm going to use to disrupt this original composition. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a ramp. So I'll make a layer, new, solid. And this will just be a layer that I can add effects to. So we're going to make gradient, ramp. And then right now there's infinite shades of gray. What I'd like to do next is to just break it into bands. And to do that, I'm going to do posterize. And so now I can control how many bands there are. Let's do seven for now. I'm going to turn this off. Then on this layer here, I'm going to do a search, my effects for displace, displacement map, and I'll drag it onto my Illustrator layer. So how this works is it takes different channels from our source image um, and then uses that to shift the pixels either horizontally or vertically. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our white solid and we'll, we'll give this a name driver, uh, just to make it a little clearer driver. Instead of source, we're going to say effects and mask because we want everything that's been applied to that layer to drive our displacement. We'll say only horizontal. We'll turn this one off. That to zero. And then in this, we'll set the luminance. And now what we can do is by shifting this, we can offset our text. And what's cool about this, so I'm going to put a layer, new, solid, a white solid in the background is that this is procedural. So for example, if I want more bands, I can do that. It's also pretty easy to animate because all I would need to do is just animate this channel here. And now that I have this set up, I can even just play with the direction the ramp is going in. You have fewer steps. I can also shift where I want these original bands to be. So if I grab levels for a second, and I'll put this over here, and I'll just turn this layer on so we can see what's happening. I have more steps. And I'll move this over. What I can do is I can weight this so I can have bigger stripes 
in smaller stripes. Look at that. And get different effects that way. So it goes bigger to smaller. And I can also turn that off. Experiment with the vertical or the horizontal and the vertical simultaneously. Super fun. In addition, I could, with the same setup here, we could have it be rings as well. So instead of doing a gradient ramp, I can do a radial ramp. Let's see what that gives us. I could, I'll turn off levels for a second. I will move the center to the center. So you can see what's happening here. Super fun. Um, for now, I'll just put it like that. Um, and I could also play with rotation. If I wanted to rotate this, what I would do is instead of displacing the pixels, I would displace the animation. So let me set that up real quick. So the first thing, we're going to turn this off. We're back to our original thing, and I'm just going to set a couple keyframes. So to do that, I'll hit Alt-R, and then we'll rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to hit N to just trim my composition to that duration. Okay, then I'll turn this back on. Uh, just to see what's happening. And then instead of displacement map, we'll type in here displace time. Plug in the same driver, plug in effects and masks, and then Let's grab, let's put a new layer, adjustment layer, put it over here. Grab this. There we go. And now that it's on that layer, I can play with the time offset. And once again, we can change the number of levels. And we can wait it. More in the center. More at the edge. We can also do random fragmentation and offset. So right now it goes from no offset to maximum offset. So if I go over here for a second, we can try something else. So let's just let's just restart this thing here. Turn off the rotation. I'm going to do Command Alt Shift G, just set it right back to the beginning. Okay, so this one we'll call random. All right, so for this, I'm going to do layer, new, solid, just like before, and we're going to add a noise to it. And this noise is going to drive our random offsets. We'll make this 100% black and white. Then to kind of break this into some kind of a grid, I'm going to do mosaic. Um, and I could have just colors, I have just columns. Yeah, let's just do columns for a sec. 
we can do little levels on here to get this in a range where we can kind of see what's happening. Okay, once again, we'll call this driver. Turn that off, turn this on. We'll do displacement map and we'll say driver. And we will turn down the juice a little. And you can see now it's, it's um, kind of a random um, offsetting. We can also try the other axis. It's kind of fun. And it's all controlled by the setup. So I could go from rows to columns like this. We could have a grid, 520, and have it in maybe 10, 10, have offset both directions. I mean, the trick with this is really just keeping everything legible. But it is definitely super fun to play with. And then each, because it's noise, each frame is going to be a different, a different offset. Okay.